Brought to you by the Rugby Outlet Mall. Equipping you for freedom and connection through rugby. Find out more at RugbyOutletMall.com. Yo, what is up, everybody? Happy New Week. Last week of May. We got a new month coming up. It's wild. I know that sounds super obvious, but, you know, I I just want to say I'm glad to have you guys listening in on the podcast. Yo, I hope everything's been going well. Welcome to Grow Rugby. My name is Gift, Gift Time Ebelu, here to take you on this journey on Grow Rugby, where we talk to people about the experiences, the opportunities that they have been able to create, learn from, find, take advantage of, offer, all the above via rugby. And, uh, yo, we have a great show today. Special guest. They're all special guests, I guess, but even special or guests, no, they're all super special or guests. But the next variation of special guest is the one and only USA Women's Rugby Sevens, Cheddar Emba. Yo, the Nigerian Nightmare, hitting it up at fullback. Yo, that is like fam now, like after the conversation, that was fam at that point. Uh, no, it was a really, this is a great conversation, really went in depth with it, learned so much, not just about the perception and seeing how our people take rugby, but even more for somebody who uh, literally is able to feel the experience and be able to communicate it so well. And, uh, look, if you don't know who Cheddar or don't remember who Cheddar is, Cheddar was, really came onto the scene in the 2017 Women's Rugby World Cup in Ireland. But she also happened to be part of that Olympic team as an alternate. And she is a Harvard graduate, a, uh, a, a biomedical science? No. Like biological chemistry or yeah, biological chemistry uh, major, like, this is intelligence galore, but one of the nicest, sweetest people. We've had great people, and she continues the trend of these nice, sweet, amazing rugby people who are doing amazing things in and out of rugby. So this is going to be a really great listen for you guys. Um, but look... Want to just make the mention because you got to update the news, you know. Yo, USA Rugby released their COVID-19, you know, rugby starter guide. It looks like June 1st is when everything begins to open up again. But basically, the concept of the guide is you got to wait for your state to tell you what phase you're in. And then at that point is whenever you'll be able to either hold competition or not, hold practices or not. It's it's basically we're working within the same guys that we were already going to be doing. We just now have USA Rugby, Rugby's seal of approval for whenever, if you want to do official matches uh, under, the, under that heading. So, I mean, look, you know, you take it for what it is. You know, we're slowly reopening the country. I'm happy for it, uh, just as long as we do it carefully. And obviously that we can be able to find ways of still being able to entertain and be creative and be able to work and be able to produce and be able to make people feel like they have purpose. Because in the end, you know, we all want purpose. And clearly people sitting around at home has proven that If anything, they either want service to be able to feel like they have purpose or they want to go out and be able to create and have purpose in whatever it is they do because not everybody is capable of doing it at home like that. So, you know, it is what it is. But want to be able to give a big sponsorship. We got to do and we got to sponsor again. Rugby Outlet Mall, you guys always know. This is the online store that is built to equip you for freedom and communication via rugby. We are all about the freedom of finding your opportunity, freedom of mobility, freedom of 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 giving, of just being able to have and find purpose. And of course, communication, the global rugby network. How do you tap into it? How do you utilize it for you on and off the field? And we want to be able to make sure that we are equipping you with the right tools for it. So definitely go check out Rugby 
outletmall.com. Find it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like and sh- like it. Tell your friends if you feel like there's people there. And the second sponsor on this is our documentary, Singapore to Rugby, any way we can. It is released. Yo, we are getting such good reviews. We have put in uh, premieres and test premieres for it. And I can't say how good it feels to see people start to see our journey. Uh, you don't want to miss it. You guys can find it actually available at the RugbyOutletMall.com. It is on the front page. Uh, 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 front page right there. Click it. Go get your copy of it. Seven episodes, 20 minutes. It is going to be the best two hours that you've done. Everybody has who has watched it has literally said, hey, I couldn't stop watching. I binge watched it. You don't have to even believe me. Like, we're going to even put out the stuff and let you know what they say. And I will tell you, I don't have, we don't put the people who just do us favors out of kindness. As much as people like kindness and they'll never tell you that you absolutely suck, but they're going to tell you in different ways that they suck. They'll be like, yo, this was a good effort. Like, hopefully you guys are able to try and do more and we can maybe see more. No, no, that's not what you're hearing. You're going to be hearing, yo, I could not stop watching. I didn't even care about rugby, and I didn't even realize how big rugby truly is. Like, this this was an amazing journey to be able to be a part of. This is an amazing journey now to be able to see people be a part of it and to be able to even next step have people be impacted and the people that we got to interact with get impacted because they're amazing. This this rugby community is amazing, and what this interview will show uh, with Cheddar is just another variation of how amazing the community is. So without further ado, I'm going to let you guys go forward. Definitely also forgot to let you know, check out the, because you guys are a Grow Rugby listener, you guys can go use promo code Grow Rugby, G-R-E-A-U-X Rugby at the Rugby Outlet Mall. And you guys can use it on any Gift Time Rugby or HBC Rugby or Travel Rugby merch that we have. And continue the symbolism. That's that's what it is. It's the shirts, the HBC Rugby shirts. We're going to be having the boards up available soon. It is about being able to support the community. It is about being able to give you guys an opportunity to not just represent, but to also offer, show, and be able to bring people into the rugby life. So, again, without further ado, let me let you have Cheddar Amba. Enjoy. Grow rugby. 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 All right, everybody, welcome to another great episode of Grow Rugby. I got another V-I-P's of P's guests here for us today. Cheddar Emba, USA Rugby, Beast Mode, as I like to call it, on the field. <laughs> Cheddar, thank you so much for being able to take the time to be on here. Oh, thank you for having me. So... I got to tell you, um, the first time whenever I heard your name, it wasn't at the Olympics. It was for the Women's Rugby World Cup Sevens. And I'm sorry, Women's Rugby World Cup uh, in, in uh, uh, Ireland uh, in 2017. And when I saw you, and then I was like, Emba, Cheddar, then I was like, green, white, green happening? Is that Nigerian <laughs> flag? I was like, yes! <laughs> My table is coming up! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> so... I was like, look, it only made sense. We go to the green land of Ireland, recognize the green, white, green in <laughs> in tow, and I understand my, this first-generation life. So I was like, immediately, this felt right. So uh, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for representing oh. so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor. It's an honor and a privilege. I mean, I, I remember, I think you sent that uh, the Black Three post during that <laughs> tournament. And you don't know how much that pumped me up, like, on so many levels. I mean, we could oh. dissect that, but just, I mean, what, what a huge stage and what we were trying to do and, you know, the intensity of the matches, um, the press, like, it, it was just one thing that helped me, remind me of, you know, who and what I was playing for and the support, so 
I mean, those little things might just be like off the cuff for you, but just know that they mean a lot. So that that means the most because I even remember I remember when that when we I I had said that because um, it even had initiated uh, during the 2016 Olympics. Uh, whenever it had initially been like, uh, I thought it was going to end up being Kristen, um, uh, Victoria, and then uh, I think Naya at the time. But I, I think whenever uh, Naya and Victoria weren't able to make it onto the trip, I was like, man, I mean, it's a, it's a great squad. But I was like, yo, the representation was about <laughs> to be legit out here. Yeah. And when we got yeah. it for the Rugby World Cup, uh, the Rugby World Cup in 2017, I was like, yes. And then added like, um, uh, boo- buoy onto that as well, and Lisa. I was like, right. It was just like, yeah. yo, this is this is what I'm talking about. Let's yeah. bring that force like, represent because you know we know, especially you know within the black community, like people still are trying to figure out what rugby is, let alone yeah. like enjoying it for the beauty that actually yeah. happens. So I was, and I think also just like that team, we had like Alicia, we had Jam, we had. Naya, myself, Chris, right. not to mention all of the other, um, like, Pacific Islander right. people. And then, you know, people from every background in the U.S., like, it, it was a pretty diverse squad, which is, that's, you know, that's ideally what represents the country. country so. Right. And yeah. I think, and, and that was, it's always something that you want to be able to see. Because obviously, whenever we put together a national team, you not only want the best of the best, you want the best to show exactly what the country is or that, that you're representing whether the team or country or whatever um and it was like i said it was dope it also held the fact that you guys absolutely were kicking ass throughout the time <laughs> too so like it made the excitement like it was i you know i i know i said it online and i'm not i'm not doing it just to blow smoke up the ass but mm-hmm. like legitimately it was the one of the most fun and one of the most enjoyable Rugby World Cup uh, watching experiences. So much so that I'm making sure that I'm there for 2021. I'm Olympic, uh, doing Olympics oh, and, and, and Women's Rugby World Cup because... That's awesome. Yeah. I, I got to see this in person. We appreciate that big time. We appreciate that. <laughs> so, look, I always go with everybody. I want to get the origin story first before, like, really tapping in to, to you know, the deeper subjects. And for you, uh, I mean, you have one of the more unique... Uh, origin stories when it comes to rugby because of the fact that your eliteness comes both academically and athletically in in so many facets but for you all right what got you started playing rugby um my roommates actually kind of introduced me to the game in college um I don't think I knew what rugby was I don't think I'd ever seen it or heard of it um, until college. Um, But um, I was playing soccer um, at the varsity level at school as a goalkeeper. And my roommates um, joined the club rugby team at Harvard, um, which again, like at that time, I didn't really know that much about, but we had a pretty tight knit crew. I actually just, well, not that this demonstrates how tight we were, but this was supposed to be one of our union years, and um, we had a Zoom catch-up call. We were all just like, it took a pandemic for us to really sit down and catch up like this. But anyway, um, two of the girls in our, in our blocking group started playing club rugby, and you know they invited me to come watch a couple of their matches, and along the way I met a couple of their teammates. Um, who are becoming, you know, they're good friends. And I really, and like, they were really welcoming and friendly. Um, and when I went to watch the game, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, open space, kind of like a soccer field. Right. Um, I saw the physicality. I saw the speed. And growing up, I had always played um, multiple positions. Mm-hmm. I played basketball as well growing up. And um, when you get, you know, older in sport and you get to like the collegiate level and start playing um at the elite level trying to make uh regionals and state and you know national teams you, you specialize um so as a goalkeeper you know i wasn't running as much and i was like starting to feel it a little bit 
Uh, it was kind of like that thing. slug. It, it's not so much. It's like the itch is not being scratched kind of thing. Yeah, it's one thing like to be fit. And I mean, in a training session for a goalkeeper, you're diving on the ground and getting back up hundreds of times. But it's another to be fit to sprint down the field and outrun right. people and be creative in that way. Um, and so they were like, I, I think you'd really like this sport. Like, you should really try it out. And at the time, it was a club sport. And at our school, club sports um, do have a lot of funding, but they play late at night, get the worst fields to train on. And so, I mean, I was like, oh, this is all well and cool, but like, there's no, in my mind, trying to balance academics and athletics, I was like, there's no way I'm going to play a sport that right. would have me up and practicing at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, it's a value not, have, not having the resources for, you know, like athletic training, that sort of thing. Well, they found out they were going varsity and I had seen them playing and started enjoying the group and I'd played um, what they call snugby during one of the blizzards in Boston, like two, three feet of snow. I don't like the cold really at all. Okay. And- like, oh, like that's my personal nightmare. I think the closest I ever got to that in any facet was one time in Atlanta and it literally was just like, like a flurry, flurry. just a yeah. flurry. No, no, I can't do it. Like, yeah, it, the ground is too hard. Everybody suddenly feels like they're you're hitting ice. I I can't. Oh do yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even at home in Virginia, like once once it started getting cold, like I have like memories of just like sitting in front of the you know the heater in the car just trying right. to be frost. And I'm sure it was like sixty degrees outside. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, look. Again, I, I tell people this. I don't know whether it's a thing being in the South or Louisiana or whatever it was, but there's something about once the temperature drops below 65, this is a yeah. different level of cold. I can't yeah. do this cold. I don't care what it, whether it's <laughs> zero or 60. It is still the same freezing to me. Yeah, so yeah. Cold. So, I mean, it was a shock to the system day one being in Boston, but thankfully soccer was a fall sport, and once the winter came around, we trained inside. We had a bubble. Anyway, so I, I went out and um, just started talking around the ball with them. And I think it helped because, you know, if you're diving in rugby or tackling in the snow, like it's just fun, it's light. And, and I just had so much fun. So we all started turning, heard it was varsity. And I was like, maybe I can use, like, this would be cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Maybe like as a cross training opportunity. Use At that point, I'd um, like, Googled a little bit of rugby and seeing rugby sevens and was like, this, this is pretty cool, you know? Um, so I approached um, my coaches and kind of put the thought in the air and was like, you know, do you think I could maybe cross train with rugby? Like it's going to be a varsity sport. Right. Won't interfere at all with soccer. Like if they'll allow me. And so, um, you know, they were like, as long as you can make the training session, like make the spring training and there's no interference, you know, we'll support you to try it out. Right. You know, <laughs> just finish spring <laughs> um, <laughs> And so I went over to the rugby coach, Sue Parker at that time, and, um, you know, introduced myself and, you know, asked if she would be, uh, if she would consider having me um attempt to join join the team i mean there were girls that have been on the team forever and i i had no like illusions that i was coming in to like steal the show or anything like that I you just were just wanted... here to you were here to like look let me be a part of this i'm hopefully can yeah. add a little bit i'll get yeah. something but you know it's exactly. i get it I'm, I'm part of the learning process yeah and being very upfront about you know like soccer is my primary right. i would only be able to play in the spring if it, you know, if I couldn't manage it with school, that, those sorts of conversations. Mm-hmm. And she was, she was super welcoming. You know, she's like, well, here's what you can do. Try it out over the summer. I'll put you in touch with these teams that are going to be where you're doing your summer internship. I was in DC at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, if you like it, you know, we would love to have you. And that's how it started. I, I started playing rugby sevens over the summer while training, doing my off-season training for soccer and an internship. I don't know how I managed it. I, I'm, I'm surprised you're still That's saying I, I'm feeling <laughs> like the, 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 the pieces of just like 
yo, the the juggle was the juggle was real. Let's put it like that. Yeah, the, literally, real. like if you imagine DC, like I was at American University. Okay, I would drive up to train for um, uh, for soccer. Nova, oh. Nova with okay. Nova Women's Rugby. Right. Then I would go down, I believe to do the soccer training in another area of Northern Virginia, I was playing with the Washington Spirit developmental side and just did that circuit all summer. So I was super fit and the girls on both sides were amazing. That's what made it work. See, I'm, you know, you, I, all Not that- Not to mention the internship. <laughs> right, I'm getting all that. The thing that has me most confused is what were these secret routes that you were taking in your car? Because I've seen I-90 in DC, that is, that is like one of the worst traffic zones I've ever yeah. dealt, dealt with. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I didn't realize they mailed tickets at that time. So coming into the, the facility, the training facility for soccer, yeah. there's this roundabout. And I mean, like in Virginia, we have roundabouts, but if no one's in it, you know, you, you go through. Right. I, I'm all for driver safety, really. But I was hitting those roundabouts. <laughs> And my parents called me. My mom called me and was like, I, uh, you have some um, tickets that came through. like, uh, And they had been building out. I think I had maybe like four or five tickets. Yeah, wow. Before, before I knew. And then she, she told me like, oh, this is where it is. And I was like, ah, oh, that roundabout. I'm going to slow down there. That was part of my summer stipend out the window. But. You know, you live and you learn. <laughs> hey, look, look, if you, you got fit, you learn the area even better, and somehow you yeah. also learn how to drift simultaneously on these roundabouts. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that sounds like a dope summer. Like, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, I, I, I love the fact that, uh, you know, the part of the reason how you were able to find this was just off of the random roommate. It's off of the word of mouth. You know, mm -hmm. like, I remember whenever I – first realized rugby was still in existence that was how i found out so i was in school one of my it wasn't my roommate but it was my doormate one of my one of my homeboys and he comes up to me he's like yo guys you need to come play for usf rugby and the only time i'd ever even done anything with rugby was when i looked up on the nfl.com website and it was when i was just used to just look up nfl stuff and they happened to say oh football derived from rugby and i was like oh, okay cool but whenever he told me about it, I was just like, okay, yo, this is one of those sports that we already have the evolution, but people want to feel like archaic in their <laughs> methods, you know? It was, it was like cosplaying to me or doing like Renaissance Festival. I literally thought that's what rugby was. I was like, yo, this is the Renaissance Festival of sports. Okay, I mean, sure, why not? People have fun, whatever we need to do. And, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't kick in, but it stayed like that roommate connect that uh that person connection it still stayed like i didn't start at that moment because i think i did a practice and again i was like nobody plays rugby in the state so why am i gonna waste time on this but it was like yo this stuck so then whenever i ended up coming back home and i think i saw the usa sevens at the time on nbc and then was like you know it'd be funny It'd be funny if I can't, Baton Rouge actually had a rugby team. Baton Rouge has nothing, but it would be funny if it did. And then you find out it does. It's like, oh, that's seeded from this. So the fact that you had that momentum where it was like, let me weed these things through. And it just kind of, it, it sounds like it was a calling. One could say <laughs> perhaps it was meant to be, Cheddar. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. And I think also it helps that, um, like, obviously not knowing at the time, but now realizing you know what a storied group that i was joining um from the club side and, right. and the women men and women that i came across there to um my collegiate side um i mean like as i started playing i started noticing the little things on campus one just being a part of harvard radcliffe rugby two you know on on the harvard football stadium they're like little i don't know what the actual art is called but you know like, like plaques memorabilia. carved into the wall like right. on the stadium and you look and you're like I don't that's not quite foot 
fall. Right. It's, it's, like, you know, something's like. Something's different so about this one. Yeah, yeah. So just seeing, you know, the history. Yeah. Um, that's attached to this sport um, worldwide and, and in the U.S. Like that it's not as well known, but people have been playing it for a long time. And, you know, that, that connection is pretty deep. Um, I think that's something really cool. And that carried over because um, it was the same way with the women's soccer team, that history mattered. So. And I think that's the same. I, I, you know, one thing, like I said, whenever I'd started in Baton Rouge and then I started looking back was always the oddness that there was a lot of people who had been playing rugby. And uh, this, here at, at the time, it had been like 40 years that the game had been in, in, in the city, let alone in, in the South and in, in Louisiana. And so for me, it was like, you know, you never hear anything of it because apparently if you're not looking for it, it, it doesn't ever appear. And then once it appears, you're like, wait, how has nobody known? There's like so many random, but like ironically, sometimes very key people who have played and you're just like, why didn't anybody tell me? I don't remember seeing anything about this. Like, how is it? So I think there's something about it. it I, the only other time I've experienced that was whenever I, uh, super random, was looking at Mustangs. And one day, I swear, I never saw a Mustang. And then one day, I saw one. I was like, oh, that's a dope car. All of a sudden, Mustangs. Popping. Everywhere. <laughs> Just everywhere. <laughs> yep, your garage door lifts up. You've got a Mustang. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, who's been playing this game? You took the invisible <laughs> So kind of I want to backtrack a little bit because I think it's really interesting, especially in the fact that how organized that you are um, to be able to just have juggled a summer like that. So like prior to this, like you said, you said you, you played in multiple sports, multiple positions, soccer, basketball. For you, what was what is that entry? What does athletics mean in the family? Because, look, I know within a Nigerian family, we have – and 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 you can attest let me know but i know typically within nigerian families we can attest to the fact that it is academics heavy and then like athletics becomes like that other thing so if we do well in athletics cool as long as the academics is on point for you doing all those sports was this also a factor that you just happened to like sports or was there a family entrance because multiple sports that's a lot of time that's being spent um without hearing ah, ah what are you doing <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> definitely definitely um I think you know my parents uh, I was blessed to grow up in a two-parent household but my parents worked a lot um and academics was key like academics and um I, I grew up in, a, I'm, I'm a Christian, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, so academics and church, I think, were the two main, main things that were, like, heavy consistent. Um, not that, you know, we were perfect by any means in either realm, but, you know, those were the, um, sorry, what's that? Those were the um, guiding factors point, that was one a and one b of everything yeah yeah and so growing up um i think before like when i was really young you know I, my parents signed me up for soccer was the first sport of course, <laughs> of course. um <laughs> they were like, like we I, want I you to be a future eagle <laughs> <laughs> i think i think i always like playing outside like I, I was an athletic kid like in preschool that sort of thing but once you know school started it it was it wasn't I, I don't remember many conversations about doing well in school <laughs> just the ones that we had it was made clear that you know yeah, you must. need to do well in school um I I remember those you know, when you have, as a first generation, you know, when you start confusing what you see the other people doing and what right. you can do at home, you know, when you come and you're like, oh, you know, like, it, it was good enough, enough. Good, good. Are you, are you just trying to be good enough? Like, 
<laughs> you know that and then that was the, that was enough of a reminder it. for you yeah. that was it um so it was almost like um sports was like a uh reward something that i got to do i loved playing sports i was always on the you know in the street playing with the boys like pick up basketball that sort of thing um and I think my mom more so allowed it. I think my dad nice. was supportive, but protective. There's always, question. There's always the question that goes in. It's like, um, is this a must? Do you really need this? Yeah, well, and, you know, looking outside and being like, that's my daughter, 9, 10, 12, <laughs> boys. And, you know, I grew up in Richmond, so... Right draw the conclusions that you want like playing right. on the street like <laughs> playing hard is a to b you know all the time okay it's getting dark come inside that sort of thing mm -hmm. i had you know i had my girlfriends in the neighborhood and we we played as well and hung out but i was always wanting to play sports so it was like if you're if your academics are in order you're allowed to play sports mm -hmm. um that was kind of the balance so as i started loving sports and trying to get better and that sort of thing it always went hand in hand and as i started realizing oh like sports can i can play at an elite level and get to to travel and that sort of thing sports can be a window into more like can help me get places right. you know can help me academically um uh that's kind of how I, those two have always gone hand in hand for me. Um, and I think also the drive to be better or the drive to improve, the drive to, to play hard was, yeah, one, that it was fun and two, that it helped pay the way <laughs> for me to play I for understand it. that. If I could earn, if I could earn, you know, that um, scholarship to play on, the club team then i could keep playing soccer you know right that, that sort of thing um or basketball you know if i could turn those heads and they wanted to help pick me up to go to training because i didn't have a ride sweet like um and then of course you know meeting people along the way that adds to it you know you you, you find another family that way so um yeah my parents um supported me i think and supported so because they saw that balance and saw that I understood where things fell. Um, keep you grounded, keep you on the track, but as long as you're doing it, hey, we're going to let you go ahead and enjoy this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, like, I, I like the perspective because it makes sports seem, and, and, and tell me if I'm getting it wrong, but it seems like for you, sports has always been a place of peace. Like, it's a refuse place as opposed to something that is like this stress or it's like yo you 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 have to it's competitive never took away the competitive side but it makes it always fun your actions have always been led by the enjoyment not just the 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 result in and of itself but the result end up playing itself out. that's i think that's really dope because it's 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 not always the case and even more so i think it it can be very daunting sometimes especially mm -hmm. when it comes to over organizing all these things and it now makes your summer make once again even more sense as to why you didn't just be like yo i'm I, look look i'm gonna have to skip on something something's gonna happen because <laughs> there's there's that perfect maybe i balance. should have but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. look we don't talk about the th same things at the moment <laughs> right after we're done and spent you know? yeah yeah but no that's super dope so for you once you're coming off of that summer, I ask, like, you're coming off of the soccer background, and like you had told me, you know, you're, you're playing as a goalie. It's not that you're out of shape, but you're di dealing with different pacing. So for mm -hmm. you, that first game, especially when it came to sevens, what was that experience for you like? Um, I can't say that I remember, like, my first, first game I'll probably have to look back at, and see what who exactly we were playing or what it was but I I do remember like when I first started playing rugby like I wasn't trying to get hit 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was a goalkeeper um, and was used to contact. Soccer mm-hmm. is still a contact sport, even, you know, like when I would play the field, you know, in college, and we were all getting our touches on the ball, playing small sided. Like you, you would get jostled around, but like that's not the objective of the game. Right. And it's not the objective in rugby, but it is a key part. So I, I do remember like running full steam, like, oh, like sweet finding gaps. And then seeing like, oh, that space is closing. Or I'm on someone's about to attack me. And I would just step out of bounds. Yeah. Like I would just. <laughs> <laughs> you will not touch okay. my body. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like explain that part to me right. um it's not like basketball there's no out of bounds and it goes back to you it's just like yo you're, you keep turning over the ball like <laughs> yeah yeah i you know try to get rid of it or uh, take myself and uh, and also just being like new to it and not really knowing what to expect from that sort of hit like it just looked like it was a heavy hit right i was just you know like i'm not really tr- trying to take on that much right now <laughs> um there's a lot going on, guys. Like, I don't know. Do yeah, we, do we, yeah. Do we really need to be making the contact. Like, yo, yeah. let's just chill. Just chill a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, as a goalkeeper, like, you get blindsided contact. And, right. like, you take it on the chin and, like, you're expecting it. That is part of the, the job description. Right. I didn't realize fully <laughs> that it's part of the job description for rugby. And you initiate it. And you play through it. Like, the ref's not necessarily trying to like protect you. Like as a goalkeeper, you know, like if you get smacked, like that's just um, if you, right. Yeah, or I mean, they target, but like you survive it. That's you've made a statement, and then you get to take your time, reset the game, or like you know that player is going to get a card, that sort of thing. Where rugby, you know, everyone's just <laughs> going for it. The consequence is you have to keep going. And that's the yeah. that, you know? No, I, and I think that makes sense. I know, like, it, no matter how many times I'll start or start, like, it takes that first hit for you to be like, okay, maybe, maybe not. And even for me, I, I, I'm not a big it, – it's weird. I like the content while also I don't care for it simultaneously. Like, I would rather be elusive and – getting through the line than I would mm-hmm. like trying to just be a battering ram and, and, and crush yeah. it through. But it's something about after you get the first one and you're like, okay, it's not really that bad. Like there's hits that hurt or can take the wind mm-hmm. out, but it's never like, Oh man, I'm in excruciating pain unless there was something yeah. respectively wrong about it, but you don't find out yeah. until you get that first hit. Yeah. And I think it also made me run harder because because of that like until you get the first hit where like they get a good hit and bring you to ground until then you're like wow, i wonder what it's like right. between the hit and hitting the ground so i just i was like i'm not trying to find out like i just kept running hard like trying not to get taken down like trying to push people off and it, i mean it, it helped um oh uh, i mean yeah if- that was so that i think that was Good in that sense. Um, yeah. That was I mean, how I navigated my first few weeks. That's a good motivation. That is a good <laughs> motivation. Look, guys, I'm just going to just keep chugging it out, like, really hard. And if they eventually touch me, well, we're going to see that we try that not to happen. <laughs> just, just <Yeah>. keep... <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, so you, you get this. Summer, and, look, you're playing with, obviously, great teams between – Spirit for soccer. Nova's a great team out in, in Virginia. Um, and then, obviously, you're doing the internship. But you're playing with these great teams, and you're getting to know, know these women that are part of it. For you, you know, the interaction that you had with the rugby women initially, um, in comparison uh, to what you had had whenever you initiated with other sports, because, you know, you, you have the experience. It's not, this isn't new team camaraderie. But what was the uh, social dynamic that um, stood out to you the most whenever you entered into the entered into the game? I think it was actually pretty different um, in that 
Um, people are introduced to rugby later, right? I mean, now that's changing, but at the time, a lot of the women on the team were like older than me, mm-hmm. um, or and and or simply more experienced. So I think I wonder if not only they were were they just friendly people, but it also helped that they were trying to like mentor me and and introduce me to the sport and engage me, help me come to like the sport and want to continue playing. Um, I remember uh, I went to um, like a Stravi camp where I met CJ Hildreth and she was just super kind. And um, that's what got me to check out her team um, and go over there and, and play. And as I'm playing over the summer, I realized like, some of the women around me are like legends of the women's game you know um they had like a nova a and nova b team right. so like they were playing for the top team you know <laughs> and so you know training wise like we would train together a lot of times and so they showed me the ropes in that way um and i think also the fact that it's um I mean, it's always a choice, I guess, to play. But when you're younger, like in the U.S., many people are paying to be there, and like, as or, or kids, like their parents are paying to be there somehow. Someone's funding their way, um, unless you know you have a different story, and, and there are other motivating fa- or supporting factors. But right. generally, where with rugby, like if you're pl- deciding to play summer rugby as an adult, like you, you want to be there. You right. enjoy the sport, but you also enjoy the environment, like going to those tournaments. And I just remember the first tournament and just realizing like, Oh, all the teams just camp out along the sidelines and like everyone's there and <laughs> you watch every team play and you support your teammates and, get back so it reminded me a little bit about of like soccer tournaments when I was younger and like you play multiple games in a day um but was also totally different in that sense of like not the reputation of like oh it's just a party all the time that some people have about rugby but just the camaraderie and Mm -hmm. and community um that was I think part of my first experience with um, that those groups. And I think they were also really patient um, because I didn't know the rules of the game. Like, like I said, like the way I was playing, I remember finding myself like on the ground and <laughs> I remember the opposing team was pretty upset with me, but like, I was like kicking my legs when I, you know, you have to play the ball because I, you know, it's the bottom of a scrum. Um, I think that was my first tournament. Um, those sorts of things were like, they kind of would laugh and be like, Oh, like we need to explain that rule to you. And um, just, you know, Dana wasn't an easy, isn't it like an easy coach. Like walking into that environment was cool because they, they were aspiring to win. Mm-hmm rugby sevens over the summer you know like they wanted to be champions so the fact that it was a competitive environment and still warm family welcoming that sort of thing um was really cool to step into no i think that's a really good balance that comes off of it because it's it can be very exhausting and like you said whenever it comes to a situation where you are personally investing in it um you know it, it it does add outside of the win factor the emotional factor so it can be really easy to you know get really upset quickly you know just because it's like yo look i just spent time even if it's dues or sipping or whatever it is it's like yo spend time we're working we're trying to get our stuff like yo you could be you're really messing this up like chill or get off the field and people can be very forceful on it but to know that you have like these arms that are kind of wrapped around you and not around your neck just wrapped around you to be able to embrace you into it it's a psychological it's so much more psychological than than uh it is just on the physical side 
Like, and yeah. I think that's, it's great whenever you have that experience to be able to have that because it sticks. I know that was me. Went to this tournament um, and like, it was the first place where I was like, yo, this feels like what I've wanted from whether an adult experience or from a club, but it was like, it, it was on the party side, but it was like, not so much about the party side, just about the, everybody on the same page for both play gameplay or or social play but we're all on the same page we had the same mindset we have the same chill it's like all right this is this is a weird commune of un- unique uh uh standard similarity and it was mm-hmm. it, 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 i think it's no no sorry oh yeah i was just saying it just it just made it into a easily absorbable moment and subsequently into the rest of the sport for me yeah, and I, I don't know that it's, I mean, that's only our experience, I guess. Like, I'm sure they're um, a range. Different range, yeah. But um, to have that for mine, I think, really was key. I think, again, like, with what I was trying to do academically, or my focus academically and, and with athletics and soccer, like, if it, wasn't I want to say this carefully but like if if it hadn't been somewhat like that I don't know that I would have stuck with it because I was aware that I was extending myself to do this and like I was very you know grateful I am very grateful and to that of all the people that have extended themselves to help me do it um but just knowing yourself and what how to spend your time wisely, I think it makes it key. So I think it was nice also in the sense that like, it was something extra that I was doing. So like the pressure in it was also different than with with soccer at that point. Um, I could just go and learn and have fun, be around these girls that like also wanted to train hard and have fun and spend time together. Um, But I didn't like necessarily have at the time, like my fitness test that I was going back Mm -hmm. to hit or, you know, all these responsibilities associated with it because I was still just testing the waters. Um, And because I, you know, had my soccer focus and whatnot, like, as you said, the partying and whatnot, wasn't really a distraction for me because I was, I was like I would want for one I was too young and and two like <laughs> like it does it doesn't fit like, li- at that point it doesn't fit to your lifestyle it wouldn't it yeah wouldn't like I I can't jeopardize that so you know it made it like you're just having fun with, with people and playing the sport and right, look and it, up doing it again <laughs> goes, it goes back to what I was saying before it sounds like it, it worked right within the realm of how sports had it been whenever you started playing sports. This is mm-hmm. the reward for the work that I'm already doing. So mm-hmm. it, it plays in, can't beat a work environment like that. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So kind of like fasting forward, moving forward a little bit, you know, you get back to Harvard. Now you're playing, it's a varsity. It became varsity at that moment whenever you started yeah. playing, right? Mm-hmm. So now you're kind of balancing off these, the varsity soccer plus varsity rugby uh, on two different seasons. And then obviously your basic academic work, which is in molecular biology, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. So for you, like when you, you came off of the summer, you did all that for you. What, what did, did that change in the, in the varsity sport for rugby in Harvard? how did you not allow yourself to be like, okay, now I'm over, over tasking because this changes it from it being a leisure sport that I'm having fun and working in to now we're like really trying to, this committed invested time. Like this is an investment that you're making now. Um, no, it, it almost made it more realistic for me because it meant, okay, they're going to have set practice times. So there, there are more rules around varsity athletics you know, with the NCAA. Um, you're going to 
be able to, you know, go into the sports med facility and do your recovery just like usual. You know, the athletic trainer for rugby and the athletic trainer for soccer can be in communication. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about like random game times or figuring out transportation. Schedule is going to be set. The coaching staff. The re- all of those regulations, like I think it, the fact that it became varsity meant they were going to have more structure. Nice. So, being that I was going to be doing something, whether it was focusing all on my soccer uh, off-season training in the spring, or getting the soccer in and, and doing rugby, no. um, it's not like it would have been completely free time anyway um so may as well put some uh, may as well put something that you know? you're gonna have a little extra on just yeah but no, yeah that, yeah it, it, i mean it, it was more work but um i think it helped planning wise that it became a varsity sport that that makes sense that makes sense and it, it, it the structure it, it the the flow of efficiency now is is handled. No, I, I can get that. So there's one thing I always I always like talking to rugby people about, especially whenever it's new and you're coming into whatever you want to call older. Let's basically anybody seems to say older is anything over eight years old. So we're just gonna go off of that context. <laughs> but um, for you, um, before you got onto the before you started with the Eagles. Um, how long do you feel like it took for you to kind of click, have the light kind of turn on a little bit whenever it came to being able to uh, play? Because, you know, if you swear it by anybody else, if you don't start by eight, nine years old, you basically are just going to be a lame duck of rugby. Um, but for you, you know, do you, do you feel like, man – I'm not getting what's happening. Well, obviously you didn't, but like how, when did you feel like it was just like, okay, I'm, I'm getting the feel of this. This, this motion makes sense to me. This game is starting to make sense to me. Um, I'm hit you with the dates. I told you, are we going there? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think there's a difference between, like getting a feel for the game and understanding strategy okay, and how to read the game. Um, but like a general, like, okay, I kind of feel like I, I understand the point right. of what we're doing or like feel like I understand how the skill set I have can work within this game and where I should apply it to, to get that upper hand. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I like started catching on fairly quickly. Like, you know, the objective is to score tries, and I started with rugby seven, so it was, right. um, less rules to pick up. Like, and I think when I first started, and you know, they were explaining fifteen, I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> <laughs> like okay, guys, you guys are going too far now. It's like chill, yeah, chill, chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I loved like the fast nature of sevens and and how like you know you have the main objectives you have the laws and then everything else is kind of off the cuff and there's a freedom in that so um just kind of was finding my way recognizing what works and what didn't work and scoring trying to score tries and when it worked it was like cool like okay i'm gonna keep doing that thing data point and um It was funny because defensively, I think that first summer, we just played with a traditional sweeper, (laughs) and they put me at sweeper. So it was... Last line of defense every single time. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I was like, cool. And I think it threw them off, too, because as a goalkeeper, like, that's that's goalkeeping in large part. So communication-wise, I was like, I'm just going to talk to them like I would my back line right I was talking a lot and I could see like puzzle wise like okay like this is the angle this is where you know I need them to shift and just like 
I rem I I feel like I remember a few times like looks back of like what what, what is she is really <laughs> talking to it like what is she saying you know where is she getting this from but that clip so um that was a, a, a bit easier in that sense um because I guess my responsibilities were a little bit less <laughs> defensively like and and that that was very much in my mind like I was like if I can direct them you don't have to do matter. as much <laughs> like I'll make that like you know last ditch effort like if I need to like I'll be there but I'm gonna do everything I can to take care of it before it happens here whether it's them making a tackle or them just applying the pressure to force the turnover because that's I mean that's similar to soccer too like right. everybody loves to see the big saves but an effective you, goalkeeper minimizes how many of those are necessary you know right um and so yeah I think just kind of for myself starting to understand in that way um and I remember a couple um, coaches or players like mentioning like, Hey, like you might have something like you're, you're playing really well. Like you should keep playing that sort of thing. Um, and I don't like, I just kept playing. I think just as I started finding more games online and that sort of thing, then I started realizing like, Oh, like there's more nice. to this, like this could, you know, um and the co my college coaches are really supportive and since they started encouraging me so it was, it was fast but gradual in that sense um i think because what? everything else is going on it, it felt pretty gradual but i recognized it i was gonna say it sounds like it was it's incremental incremental but consistent you know, mm -hmm. fractional but consistent and it, like again interesting of utilizing what you'd already been knowing and it just, just happenstance to be in a position where you already had knowledge. Now it was just like how to tweak it right into the, to the sport itself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I think that has carried over. Like I understand that they're different sports, but I think, I mean, I think that's how we do life in general. Like if you can kind of associate it with something that you sort of understand then maybe it'll help you catch on a little bit and then you dive deeper and start understanding details, you know? Um, so yeah, recognizing where skills could cross over um, was, I think, something that really helped and, and made it exciting, like, for me. Um, oh, I like it. I like it. And, and, um, yeah, I, I like that because again, it just I, I like the usage where you know how do you you know how to combine things because you're right. That's what we that's why we generalize. The concept of generalization is built on the fact of us finding a similarity in something and then being able to to be able to decompartmentalize it based off of what we've what we know and then what we learn individually. So you're in it. You're in this with a Harvard team. All right. You, so what, what happened between you and getting to the Eagles? So you're with Harvard, you're playing with Harvard for two years, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you go from playing with this varsity team, playing well, and it's at the time when things are streaming a little bit more. So you guys are being shown a lot more. Who came up to you and was like, yo, let's, Hey, Cheddar, you think about uh, wanting to be an Eagle? Hey, you know, this whole academic life, you want to come uh, literally to the other side of the country? <laughs> um, well, I think actually after my first season, um, I was, uh, I don't know if um, Coach Whitwell had mentioned it or if I had just been invited to like an age grade like can't like collegiate all americans or like something like that camp mm -hmm. and i remember i was like no like i need to focus on or not not on that I, I i just remember not going right because i was like you know i'm going into my senior year i have to do 
my preseason prep this summer I'm playing um I stayed in Boston you know I was like I'm playing for the breakers I'm gonna be doing research like um I think I also may have traveled or something that summer but I, I just it didn't I was like I I won't be able to um do this camp she actually helped make it possible for me to attend the camp and so I went and got that first case um and and really enjoyed it like I saw pictures of that camp I have, I have pictures of the first kit that I got and um I ended up being invited to that tour that they took afterwards I couldn't tell you where they went or anything because as I said, you know, I was like, I have these things lined up. I think the camp was like in May or June. So like right. I was able to go to the camp. I, I got it kind of mixed up and apply everything I just said to the prospect of right. going on tour Jeez. that I was just like, you know, I, so priorities. Like I can't really right. do that right now. Um, so that was my first like, taste of it I, I believe um and I think at that camp um like Sparks was like uh one of the uh, one of the big coaches um for women's rugby I feel like in the U.S. and, and within the national team he was like have you ever thought of playing seven <laughs> and uh I you know I think I probably said something back to him. I was like, oh, yeah, that's when I first started playing. You know, like, I love seven. The camp, I, I think, was the team scared. Yeah. And, you know, that my first year was a little bit surprising because I think we played a little bit of 15 in the spring. I wasn't anticipating that. So I had to learn a little bit more there. Um, the experience I had at seven, like, wasn't enough. There was a lot of stuff that I'd pick up. Right. Um but was again your first I played at that time. Yeah. 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 But it, again, like they're like you'll either be a center or fullback. <laughs> and then I started really liking fullback. So like great, you'll be at fullback. <laughs> if next day we might have to put you at wing, but like I just I you know I I love fullback it right. It has all the pieces. I mean, um, this is when it comes to, hey, I sweep, I see the whole field, yeah. we demand it, yo, we can make sure if I have to do I a break play, I'll catch it. <laughs> I don't really understand all this strategy, so like <laughs> when I see the gap, I'll get there, and then I can just run, you know? Um, but yeah, so getting a taste that way, um, you know, made me more curious, and I think I started rec- realizing the opportunities that existed within rugby, mm-hmm. and the wheel started turning and, you know, I think I was like, it would be really cool to be able to play this at the elite, at the international level to play for right. the national team and recognizing, you know, that seventh is going to be in the Olympics and, you know, growing up having seen the Olympics and um, obviously watching in terms of soccer. Um, of course. And, you know, it, playing soccer at some of the highest levels current at that time and and knowing you know like you know i all things considered probably wouldn't be able to pursue this the way that would be necessary to chase that dream right um you know there's not that it's you know a surprise that you're competing against tons of other women and and women that are, you know, there's always someone out there working harder or playing at a higher level already than you. Um, but just it's being fact. realistic about, It's like different you know, factors that, that become stuff. involved within that. Like, yeah. it's, not, it's not just a meritocracy on the field. It's, you know, what are you doing off? What are they doing? What is the representation mm-hmm. in terms of regions and yeah. what do they have? What is their notoriety? Like, there's, it becomes so daunting yeah. on how many things can yeah. be part of that. Like, it, Exactly. And with rugby, you know, like getting uh, that, that encouragement um, and recognizing like, okay, this is a growing sport in the U.S. This is where I am right now and the opportunities that I'm getting 
um, and the time frame. You know, I was like, I could just go for it, and you know, God willing, it works out. And you know, if it doesn't, then continue on. But like, there's a set time frame. And so I think I mentioned um, to or had a meeting, like, or just conversation, I think, with coaches. I was like, okay, like, I think I might be interested in like trying to pursue um, playing the national team. Like, you know, what? Sh- should I be doing or or they had mentioned it something some some conversation like that right and I got to the point in my mind where I was interested and so then I started um I was invited to a sevens camp right um going in to the rugby season of my senior year so like that winter I yeah think. like I finished out um my senior season of soccer and um I wonder what it was like for the coaches because I was really like soccer season like like I wasn't I, that, I tried to that was like all those years of investment and we finally this is the it's known conclusion you, mm-hmm. you were just in that you were in that moment yeah but um afterwards like I knew like okay like I have this camp coming up after break like and get these touches and and being excited not really knowing what to expect being like mm-hmm. oh my gosh like this is a national team camp like at the olympic training center i think i remember getting that email and being so excited and um because i remember like sue was like okay like I, i'll you know we'll see or you know cool then this is what we'll do and and it all came together that sort of thing right um and so I went to that first camp, and that's where things kind of started. Um, that's where I got a taste, another taste of the elite level, um, this time seeing the seven set up, seeing the people that I'd literally, like, learned the game from. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, okay, this is rugby seven. And I was playing, I was watching the USA women's right. national team. And then to show up at a camp and be like, <laughs> Victoria Plot, Jill Plot. You know, no, like, like, oh, wait, am I with you guys? Like, yeah. am I allowed to be here right now? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, though. Um, so that was crazy. I mean, um, to be in that environment and so hard. Like, I remember just being so exhausted. One, you get to it, like anyone will tell you when they come to camp at the training center, like even having been in college, you know, you have the dining hall and that sort of thing, but like this is a dining hall for elite athletes. Right. Any bar you want, (laughs) food made to order, like good food, like it's open at all hours. Like I remember like being so exhausted, but also being so full. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like you, you have to be able to like, I love it because you know, you have to take advantage of that experience because it's just, it's the presence. It's just like, yo, I know people who I've watched since I was young, they trained at this facility. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting relatively at the same table as them who trained at this. Like right. I'm being in, like it's the energy of the environment yeah. that yeah, just being surrounded by like all those other right. current like Olympians or people tr- trying to become Olympians from every kind of sport. You see the pictures everywhere. You see the rings. You see the flag, and, and you really get a sense of like what you're going for right. beyond just rugby. Like you. Stu- you get a sense of how big it is bigger than you it it goes Mm -hmm. it's it's bigger than where i'm at yo see and that i find i mean i it's 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 it it changes the definition of whenever you play because now it's there's purpose it's not just i play for myself I, i enjoy but it's like yo oh there's a real mission that's coming behind this that we're we're doing I might get on that Wheaties box that nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> Wheaties are expensive. Serena's on the box right now. And I'm like, oh, it would be so good to have that box. But I'm not paying $7. Oh, look, don't get me started on grocery store costs. Like, this is, 
this is a whole thing that I, no matter how much I've done it, it never sits right with me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know how people, how do, how do people ever pay for this? How do people give me all the wow. great value, you know, generic yeah. variation or whatever, because mm -hmm. yo, your brands are not worth this much. All right. Yeah. <laughs> How do I spend a hundred bucks on four items? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> no. So, all right. I'm going to keep fast forward a little bit. Cause I, I don't want to tire you out too much, but I really am no, legitimately okay. interested. That's I love your okay. perspective on this. Um, so, okay. We have two major events that kick in for you. You have the Olympics that you got to experience and you have the women's rugby world cup essentially what I would consider as two of the same level events of two different, you know, obviously forms of rugby uh, with very significant, um, uh, um, what's the word I'm wanting to look for? Significant viewerships that came from it because they were historic in the Olympics, obviously first time being back. And as women, first women's rugby in the Olympics, women's rugby world cup, most viewed Women's Rugby World Cup all time to this date until pro next year when everybody so badly needing sports as well, too, that everybody's <laughs> going to be watching. <laughs> you know, for you, you've traveled before out of the country, correct? Mm -hmm. Prior to prior to that, that Olympics time. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you understand the travel, but going into that environment, and we already talked about the Olympics. Well, I mean, I understood the track, but it's, it's different like if traveling what, for these teams and yeah. traveling like to travel with i guess i i mean i hadn't really like i left the country i guess twice okay so twice. this this was like um, but it was like for school mm. and i went down to it for some volunteer work you know so like this was very different this was, <laughs> Huge <laughs> experience. Look, I, I had that going to Asia. Like, I've traveled with my parents, and that was always good going to, like, Nigeria and maybe another country, but basically mm -hmm. always going to Nigeria. But then it's, like, traveling out, mind you, again, with purpose, and obviously you're with the team, but it's as an adult and, mm -hmm. like, with a mission. And yeah. now you are – you're really here to feel the culture, but you're also here to make an impact. So I was mm -hmm. going to say, what was, what was that moment? Because this one has to stand out. This is, you've watched the Olympics before. You've seen it on mm -hmm. TV multiple times. And now you're there. You're walking. Yeah. You are mm -hmm. wearing that crazy USA gear that they have to, to put on. You are... Well yeah, sort of. I mean, I was an alternate, so... Um, You're an Olympian. Like... <laughs> not, not You're no, an Olympian working, if you travel. Working towards <laughs> that. Working towards that. So, okay. I mean, I had... I, and I had traveled um, in college with the soccer team, but and so we, we traveled to play, but like you said, you know, you take in the environment a little bit, a little mm -hmm. touring with um, going to Rio as an alternate and obviously the, the team going to play um it was business yeah. it was coincidentally my first like tour mm. um international tour with the national team um i had gone domestically to a couple places but i hadn't like made a stop yet and so um you know realizing like oh this is a business trip you know like the biggest business trip but like um you you're not there to set the seat like right. you um as as the alternates we stayed uh at the you at team usa house we didn't we didn't actually stay in the village nicole and i my my roommate now um it was a challenging experience right because you want to be with the team you want to be on the team you want to be about to play you want to play right um and we were in a supporting role but like um we still had all the training sessions you're wearing you know your national team gear um we had like a smaller package of stuff that we because you still had to wear some form of kit right you got to represent you in getting, some way shape or form yeah right? even though you weren't getting like the olympic kit like we had our usa outfits and 
um, you know, we would go like right outside of the village <laughs> and wait to pick them up and go to training and then drop them off and then go back to the team USA house. And there were actually other athletes um, staying there in preparation nice. for their games. Um, that was really eye opening as well to see um, other sports and what they were doing to get ready. Uh, Jordan Burroughs. Yeah. The wrestler was there at that time. Like the fencer, um, I forget his first name, but his last name is really involved. Chomley Watson or something. Um, you know, I remember they were pretty friendly and, and getting to see them and seeing their training partners. So those sports actually bring people. Um, I don't know that they're necessarily reserved. I think they're literally just sparring partners Yeah. that come. So, I mean, it was, it was humbling in that sense to understand, um, again, being a part of something bigger than yourself, recognizing that you're not the only one seeing what you're striving for, getting more motivation, um, and to just get a, a little taste of the overall Olympic spirit right. was pretty, pretty awesome. Did you, um, did, were you able to, yeah. to, to communicate with, I mean, obviously you said they were pretty nice, but were you able to keep in contact with any of those people uh, even after? Because, you know, you're, you're dealing with not even just so much the elite of the elite in their sport, but it's this... I don't know maybe the best way to say it, but it's it's getting to see both the humanized as well mm -hmm. as the athletic versions of people. And, you know, yeah. a lot of times, you know, when it comes to spectators, they, you, you know, we know this. You look at athletes, people look at athletes and go, oh, man, you're an athlete, do what you do. Yo, you're great. But it's as this athlete and subsequently your sport mm -hmm. defines you versus you're getting to see these people you know, in there while they're training, while they're warming up, but this is them. There's not a yeah. athlete them. This is mm -hmm. as a person, mm -hmm. you know, were you able to take advantage of that? And maybe to, to, um, I mean, that's an interesting question because I, I don't think we really got, did as much as maybe we could have. Um, I think like we were both like, you know, starstruck essentially like being <laughs> younger members of the team right and in this case not on the team just you know there as alternate uh, as injury reserves and taking it all in and again like I said like this is the big event so everyone's laser focused like you're you're observing and like you know you you might chat when you guys are doing your workouts in the gym together like when you're sharing space like that little offhand comments but most of the time, like, you're traveling around, even just within the compound there, like, with your your coach. Right. Like, I don't think that we ever saw them apart from their coaches, like, <laughs> strategizing, watching film, that sort of thing. Um, but it did, you know, like, I definitely still, like, follow them and, like, have an interest in, you know, their athletic careers and, and seeing what they're up to and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it was a very different experience, I guess, than going into the 2017-15 Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Um, I think it, it definitely added to that motivation to like make the team and be a part of that. And, um, just a different experience being a team member, mm -hmm. um, and having the event solely focused on rugby, I think, right. was another huge thing. Um, I think the number of people that are involved with 15s as well. Like, we had, um, I think, two or three months in residence, you know, conveniently at the training center here. Um, so we kind of just shifted from 7s into 15s training. But then all the 15s players came in as right. we worked down to making the final squad or worked up to making the final squad. Um, and then travel wise. Yeah. Similar, like, um, business trip mentality where we stopped in DC first, um, and did some send off things and then 
flew to Limerick where we had like a prep time, which was similar to what we had um, with Rio. Like we went, I think, and trained maybe like, uh, well, I was, I was a late call up. So they went to Florida and trained for a week. And then, and then went up we were to... also there okay. in Rio for a week prior. I think it was a week. Um, kind of get the environment yeah, and everything like exactly. that. To, right. Exactly. Um, start to understand lay the land. With the 15th World Cup, it's spread over a month. So um, that allowed a little bit more time for like getting to see the country, which right. I thought was really cool. Like to this day, Ireland is one of, um, or what I know of, what I've got to experience of Ireland and like the little um, introduction I had, I think has made it a top um, destination for me. That's so um, I've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. I've heard that from a lot of people yeah. that they go to Ireland and it's like, yo, this is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever had the experience of going to. I've mm-hmm. actually never had anybody. The, oh, I, my only experience with Ireland was going through the airport. I'm not going to lie. I loathed everybody in that airport. But <laughs> that being said, I was told that that was an unusual experience because if you step outside of it, then you get the real people. So yeah. I take my experience with the ultimate grain of salt from there. <laughs> I'll go off of what everybody else has been saying <laughs> until that, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's, I, I always wondered, you know, I- exactly what the interaction is with when it comes to the international players, because, you know, you guys are all within this environment. Obviously it's a very business environment, but there, I would assume whether it's for eating or something, there has to be a crossover yeah. and then mm-hmm. when you guys play like, you play each other, like especially when it comes to seven. You're like you're basically playing the same people every mm-hmm. few weeks, over and over and over. So I wonder, mm-hmm. like, how much do you get to interact with the other women that play, and you know, then obviously what you do on the field versus you know how we do with us in the club environment. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me again, um, being newer to the sport and newer to the national team and international environment like uh, it's definitely been a journey for that side of things as well because just you know, I was just starstruck and I think um that also played a role in, on the field as well mm-hmm. like being like oh that's Portia with Nemanja up across well thankfully in seven slightly mm-hmm. not directly across from me from <laughs> but sometimes but um or you know like I remember like Honey Hreme and, and Kayla McAllister some of my still my favorite players like just being like I'm on on the pitch with them like the top players from every team like right. I could name 20 30 players right now that like At first, it was just like, whoa, well, let's be playing on the same pitch. And then, as a competitor, to be looking at them like, okay, this is my opposition. Like, right. okay, I can, <laughs> I know I need to compartmentalize like the like celebrity factor. So I've done that. And now it's competition factor. And um, I think just my sporting background, like, we, and especially in college, like, we weren't the type of team that like hung out with mm. right, which is our, normal. Our opposition, right, for soccer, right. seeing I mean, it with rugby, for, right. That's why I say it's it's normal not to hang in uh, any other sport. Like your opposition yeah. is your opposition, and, yeah. and so it's like, yo, you're cool with your teammates. Which whenever people always talk about camaraderie, I was like, yeah, yeah every sport has that within the locker room, basically. Yeah. But it's whenever you're like, it's your opponents that you're also mm-hmm. cool with. Mm-hmm. Within a, the same sphere, it's like, that's that's when it gets weird, you know? Yeah. And so, that's yeah. what, and so yeah. I think I, d- I definitely struggle to turn that <laughs> off. And especially because the tournament is two, three days straight. Like, you have to, you know, do whatever you need to do. Like, right. Be focused and stay on. So, like the idea of like oh we just lost this team and now like go like share a joke like i'm not there yet you <laughs> know like or oh we're about to play the team like 
uh, that's been something that like has been challenging for me Mm -hmm. coupled with like my natural nature I think is kind of like a little bit shy and like um nervous to like Mm -hmm. reach out in that way but lately like that's that's a big part of what or lately I've been trying to do that more because there are so many cool um players women coaches just people that you even to the referees like that you um come across and like it's one thing to like be amidst them and like in passing interact and it's another to like take advantage of the opportunities like you said to like right. get to know all these different people and um find similarities find friendships and uh it's now i'm getting to see like as i've played more um how fun that is um because yeah you, you do see a lot of the same faces during tournament time like you share dining hall um the locker rooms are yeah every team has their own locker room but like you're gonna pass teams on their way to the field and on the right. way to recovery um you're by the same team the whole tournament um that sort of thing so yeah there's the on-field time there's off-field time and you just find that balance <laughs> yo no i because you know, I talked to Charity Williams with uh, Canada uh, a couple weeks ago, and she said the same thing. She was like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm so used to focusing in on my own team. I, you don't interact with the opponent. This is That's good that, to hear, though. That. <laughs> right. It's just, it is. But, it, it, and, but she also said, you know, like, like you, it's like once you've played for a little bit of time, you start to like, okay, let me settle in a little bit. It's – now we're familiar, and, you know, I would always assume at least from the, the most basic area is knowing that you guys have all been on the international stage. And so for whatever it's worth, whatever it's I share the bond where I'm equally praised by my, the fans in the country while I could also equally be criticized by them, mm-hmm. but we understand that we're playing at this level where everybody's spotlighting us and stuff yeah. like that and yeah that that mutual respect definitely is has always been there and and then now i think using that as like a jump off point for more like to learn from these people that i'm around every every day and um to share in that sense because yeah it's, it's an international game and we're from all over the world so right. um just why not take advantage of that and, and expand your horizons in that way. Um, for sure. I think being at Pan Am this summer was pretty cool to like start, um, doing that more, um, and more because, uh, it was actually different, a lot of different teams than we're usually around. But, Mm -hmm. um, I would say that was a big component of Pan Am, um, whether it was other USA teams or some of the other rugby teams, like, from South America and yeah yeah because you know you always shake hands you always congratulate people but um and are supportive in that sense but like it's rare that someone's not going to be receptive to you like right supporting them on something specific um you because you know you see it so like if it comes to mind like that's something I think I've tried to do is like just you know, if I remember, like, oh, that play that they had, and, like, it was awesome, like, I'm going to cheer for it. Like, I'm right. going if to, if the opportunity arrives, like, I'll give them that pat on the back because, you know, I should and, and I want to and making that contact, so. You know, and, and, I mean, even at the minimum, it's just, like, it feels, it, it feels good. Like, you, you know, it, like if you receive it, regardless of whoever the person is, like someone goes, yo, that was a really dope play that you had. That was great. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, yo, I thank you. But in your heart, you're like, oh, <laughs> and it, it stands and, you know, it, it, it makes a measure, but you know, um, but when you talk about like, whenever you're dealing with other teams or even, something about the international effort of being able to notice these 
different sets of people and, it, you know, get to experience it. Like, I remember just this last year going out to Asia and, mm-hmm. um, and you get to, you get to see people who are doing similar things in different scopes. And it's like, okay, I'm appreciating how your look of this world through this sport that we kind of have the same basis standard on, but we're looking at it through these like slightly different binoculars, but yeah. and just see how that comes out. Like it does create an attachment because now there's a value of, like you said before, learning about them. They learn about you and you mm-hmm. feel like, yo, we're putting something that is useful in the big, in the big nature. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the fans also play a huge part in that um, because, interacting um i love being able to have conversations like this like i might be nervous about getting there but once (laughs) i'm in it um and especially like on the field like after a game um getting to or or just you know i'm passing in in the stadium like on the way to warm-ups or that sort of thing when you bump into fans from like all over the world and and you recognize, like you said, you know, that shared um, thing, that thing being rugby and, and that they want to connect with you and you want to connect with them. And, and that bond is really cool. Um, mm. No, it's real. Let me ask you this. And this is something that I've, I've started to experience a little bit in, in doing this media stuff for the last few years. It's the concept of celebrity. All right. And, and let's take it within the nature, like for you, within the rugby world, there is a level of celebrity that you have. Chetta Emba, USA Eagle, number 15. I don't remember what number Eagle you are because you guys have so many and <laughs> I feel like you guys just memorize it yourself. So I'm going to let you have that. But within it, on an international stage, you have it. Whenever you start looking at maybe how media sources cover a celebrity now, like in some way, shape, or form. Do you ever feel like celebrity is a little bit more humanize, humanizing for you, not by the media source, but a little bit more humanizing because you have a better understanding of what it means to be in the spotlight. So maybe if you see somebody that has been recognizable to you, like not that you don't still get the jitters or you can't still be a little, you know, star shocked, but it's like they don't seem as distant as maybe you would have initially thought. It's just, they seem more real. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Mm-hmm. You I, mean, hmm? you're saying like me seeing a, a, a I guess I guess it's like, okay, let's use an example like this. You've been on the field with somebody like Portia Woodman. Portia mm-hmm. Woodman has, is developed a brand that is incredible based off of her play. Everybody knows Portia, but you've met Portia or you've interacted with Portia or whether it's on the field or not. It doesn't mean that she's not well known, but for you, it's not, the celebrity is not so daunting where you're like, no, I know who they are humanly, not just as this entity. Like, because you started to interact with that. Like, I think I had an example. I was in the elevator with, like, Brian Habana uh, for the Rugby World Cup. And I was looking, and I was like, man, I should be, like, a lot more excited about this. But in my mind, I was just like, oh, you're just a guy. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're a very talented guy. But I really like the fact that it's like, yo, you get, like, you're a guy. I don't feel maybe that natural hesitancy to interact because it's like, you're human. You're human. You're not just that you're not the thing that's spoken of like that's what i mean mm-hmm. like do you feel like that yeah. has impact um i think within rugby um for sure like i think uh especially among the women mm-hmm. just because yeah you share the field or at some point or another you like you you played them um it's definitely still there <laughs> uh, but 
yeah, it, it humanizes it a little, humanizes them a little bit. And right. you, you're like, yeah, but, you know, like, we play with the same rugby ball, we put on our cleats, same with that sort of thing. Right. Um, and I think it's also started happening a bit more now that we've had more stops with the men. Mm-hmm. Because again, like, yeah, we share the same dining hall. We watch the same game. You might turn and like realize that the table, you know, three down from you is like watching the same play that you're watching or had the same reaction or you're cheering for the same people. Um, so that's helped. But there's, there are definitely still players um, that like, maybe to someone else like it wouldn't be a big deal but for me like because i've i watch them or like i really uh, identify with or like model after something they do on pitch or off pitch or remember something they've said or um some something like that where like if i come across them it's like that comes to mind (laughs) first and i almost have to like remind myself (laughs) yeah like to to give myself that like um i mean i want to say like give myself confidence like take away i guess yeah that like nervous energy around it yeah exactly um and if i like if i was thinking like oh maybe i should go like ask them a question or like or oh i wanted to talk to them about this sort of thing like to take that step um but yeah it's still there a a little bit um but yeah it helps you kind of have the courage to cross that line or or, you know to share that same space I wouldn't say cross Mm -hmm. the line but recognize that you share the same space you breathe the same air and and um to interact as like I mean I think colleagues is kind of a little bit too casual but like you know as people that do the same thing or like can understand um the the same the experiences that they each have right um that has been really cool like in cape town we um we had our jersey ceremony presented by like cecil Africa, and that was a starstruck moment <laughs> um uh but then we were able to do some volunteer work and some um did I lose you other normalize things um Outside of rugby, I think it's a little bit different. Like, <laughs> I think it's still... It's like, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. Um, I think, again, it helps that our training center um, supports various sports and um, doing the same thing that we're talking about with on the circuit and, like, mm-hmm. with other rugby players, with other athletes at the center and um, really taking advantage of that wealth of knowledge and opportunities for friendship and mutual support that sort of thing um but yeah i don't i don't think it makes i wouldn't scoff at (laughs) any celebrity now but (laughs) well look look i'll I'll say i'll say one to be able to have maintain the wonder i is i like to use the wonder i think is something that is important and it's awesome because yo you still want to be able to be like yo I looked up to that person, even if I'm playing like that's, that's the OG, like that's, that's yeah. legit. And, you know, you always have that respect regardless of whether you consider them celebrity or not. But at the same time, also recognizing that you've also earned yourself into the same space that they have been, you know, and it allow yourself the freedom to be like, yo, I'm here too. Like I, I did my <laughs> thing too. Like, yo, what, what? <laughs> Why are we trying to worry? Trip on me alone, you know. <laughs> that's encouraging. Yeah, it's, it, that's a, that's a really well put way to say it. I mean, I think um, that yeah, having that is is important um, to let you help yourself get to that next level and to you know not walk around with your head down all the time <laughs> like, you know, like I might maybe have in the past, but just you know to 
you know, walk in yourself and, and recognize and appreciate where, what you've come through to do as you continue to strive. Yo, I like it. So I'm going to ask you kind of last question for you, you know, um, I want it because I'll be honest with you, Cheddar. I, I could have another conversation with you for like another hour or two just to go. <laughs> but we got to give these little, like to give to, these yeah. little something to come back to. Yeah. I need to come yeah. back. I need to be able to talk All to you right. again on this. <laughs> um, but you know, kind of as you've now started in this path, and 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 obviously you have a lot of things still on your plate. What is it that you are looking forward to uh, now in terms of? Maybe legacy might be the wrong word, but what you're looking forward in terms of your future, uh, both on and off the pitch? Hmm. Um, I think for me, um, lately I've really been having a lot of, well, not just myself, but as a team, we've really, um, spent a great deal of time talking about culture and, and our mission and purpose and how our values as a team and as individuals align within that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do recognize the um, platform that we have as a team and that I have as an individual. And uh, I think something that I am working to navigate is taking advantage of that platform and um, I I would like to be uh, or offer a good representation of whatever aspect of my identity that people might identify with Um, whether it's being a woman being a female athlete you know being first generation being African American being American being, you know, from whatever background, um, I think that that's a really cool part of what we do. Um, so figuring out uh, how to do that in a way that's still authentic to me, um, uh, is something that I think I would like to do on and off pitch. Um, I think when it comes to like the media and whatnot, like saying yes to more <laughs> um, and figuring out how to uh, align with people and, and um, groups um, and brands that um, I think match up with uh, the things that I, I value and find important. Um, and again, are authentic to me um, getting past that uh, I guess shyness that we talked about before. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just want to keep growing as a player and as a person and, um, increase my understanding of the game and, and, um, understanding of the strategy and, um, improve my skills and execution. And, and I, I would like us, um, as a program to continue striving and to continue growing and, um, to be a part of that and to do my part to help bring it to that next level and for us to do our part as a team um, because, yeah, we are a big part of this movement in the United States and have a great opportunity. Um, so while we're enjoying it, recognizing that and um, recognizing that privilege and that, and that opportunity and, and making something of it. No, I... I, I legitimately love that because, you know, the best way of seeing change is seeing it from the top and, and having it mimic down, uh, down, down the totem pole a little bit. And like you said, yeah, you guys are, you know, a major component of it. Um, you know, you, you guys create a flash. And I know for me, watching you guys play, it's a legitimate thing of beauty. I truly enjoy watching you guys play. It is so fast. It is so fluid. And, uh, and I, I, it, it represents amazingly. So, and again, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to just like blow smoke, but legitimately I, <laughs> I've enjoyed it from the moment I started watching till even to this day. So, 
Um, you know, I, I like the fact that you are looking at it for the next level. And yeah, I, especially considering all the, all the background that comes with, with everything that you have and everything that you're aspiring to be and everything that you, you can stand for. Like there are a lot of people who really, really are looking to it. So uh, in two aspects, one, I'm, I'm thankful that you are taking that step. And two, I need you to recognize that you are a celebrity now and <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> you need to take that mantle and understand that you, you wield it just as much as anybody. And, uh, uh, and I'm really happy that you are one who has been given the blessing to be able to have that. So, um, Cheddar, I truly, truly appreciate this. We will have a greater, another conversation. Oh, at another looking forward time. to it. This is so fun. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Oh, I love it. Oh, and look, quick question. Where can anybody, where can they find you at? Um, you mean media-wise? Yeah, social media-wise. Uh, social media, it's, it's very straightforward. At Cheta Emba, C-H-E-T-A-E-M-B-A um, on Instagram. And it's actually, I just changed... Um, I don't know. I might change it back on Twitter. Before I had my zip, my area code, but now it's at Cheta Emba on Twitter. To keep it simple you're as well. You're getting too big. You're getting too big to yeah. be coming out of your locations <laughs> like that. Like you represent, but like yeah. represent, but <laughs> yeah. So those are the two um, social media platforms. I, I I do Facebook, but not really as much. Um, I think Instagram is definitely the go-to. Um, and yeah, you can shoot me a message through there um, and I'll respond and hopefully we can make something happen. I love it. Yo, thank you for coming through. Appreciate you having me. It was a blast. Have a great rest of your day. Yo, did, look, it, this was great. I, I could talk to Cheddar for literally another hour and a half, two hours longer. Um, and I, we will definitely be having her back on the podcast again. I hope you guys enjoyed it because this this was a great, great insight. I loved uh, loved the thought process. Loved ta- hearing about the Olympics. Loved the the origin. Like this was great. And I hope, like I said, you guys really enjoyed it. Um, guys, definitely check out the other podcast. We've got some amazing amazing guests last week we had mr ram eddings the legend founder of the gray wolves coach of idaho state rugby previous to that uh we had cyphodine Safir, uh one of the co-founders for morehouse rugby uh before that you know we had uh phil thiel we've had uh former usa rugby uh blaine scully uh, you former USA rugby captain, Elena, uh, Angie Elena, uh, Swiss rugby, uh, player and Instagram influencer, the Naya Tapper, USA rugby sevens, um, Tiana and Kyle Granby, Dave Rhymes, uh, Raheem Vital and, uh, Mike Toussaint. Uh, just, just, we have had some amazing, great, lovely guest, Chisa Beilu with Pedal. Like, you guys really need to go back, check it out, and please give us a review on the Apple Podcast, or any of the podcast ones that let you have a review if you're listening on Spotify or wherever, but you guys, I I can't tell you how much it's great to be able to talk to these people. I love the fact that we can show this to you, and I hope that you guys are able to take from it. Also, once again, big thanks to our sponsors, Rugby Outlet Mall, and uh, the documentary, Singapore to Tokyo, any way we can, the series. Definitely go check out both of those. And also utilize promo code GROWRUGBY, G-R-E-A-U-X, rugby at rugbyoutletmall.com. Guys, I hope you guys continue to have a great one. You guys continue to have a great week, great year, great month. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay highly favored, and we'll talk to you next week. Cheers.